Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. Okay, folks, I don't mean to get you too excited, but uh, today we have a truly special guest, one who needs no introduction, but who nevertheless will get one because I get paid by the word. Folks, it's the DV Rebel himself. That's right. In this week's action-packed episode of Red Giant TV, Stu Mashowitz, the visual effects supervisor for Sin City and many other films, will be showing you how to get that blockbuster film look you'll be seeing this summer in movies like Terminator Salvation, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and The Taking of Pelham 123. But before that, let's find out a little bit more about Mr. Mashowitz, shall we? Who is this Stu guy anyway? Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Stu's early career had him working at a small light fixture company. What? Really? Okay, um, I'm being told that that's not correct. Apparently, Industrial Light and Magic is actually some sort of visual effects house. Now, I've never heard of them, but you know, there are so many of these small production companies. Honestly, who can keep track of that? Yeah, I know. They can't all be winners. All right. Stu's early career had him working as a digital effects artist for Industrial Light and Magic on films like Deep Impact, Men in Black, the re-release of the Star Wars trilogy, not to mention some of my favorite movies, Galaxy Quest and Star Trek First Contact, which, by the way, would easily be the grossest Star Trek film of all time if not for those nasty earbugs in the Wrath of Khan. <sighs> anyway, from there, Stu eventually co-founded The Orphanage, a visual effects house that created many of the effects seen in Harry Potter, Superman Returns, Iron Man, Sin City, and The Spirit, just to name a few. Stu is also an accomplished director, and if you've seen the films and projects that he's worked on, you can tell that for him, color is a big part of storytelling. In fact, over the years, to help in his storytelling process, Stu invented several tools, which eventually became Red Giant Software's Magic Bullet product line. And in this episode, Stu, who is also our new creative director here at Red Giant Software, will show you how to use some of these tools to help you tell your story and breathe new life into your footage. Take it away, Stu. Hey everybody, this is Stu Mashwitz, and I'm going to take you through uh, some tutorials about how to use Magic Bullet looks and Colorista and you know some other effects that uh, you might already have to emulate the looks of some popular movies. And uh, the ones that I've chosen to uh, use today as our examples are Terminator Salvation, uh, The Taking of Pelham 123, uh, and where the Wild Things Are, and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, of course. Um, all Each of these movies, in their own way, have uh, very distinct looks, and uh, each of them may seem completely different from one another, but there are also some similarities that I want to point out, and I'll show you how understanding those similarities can help you uh, get the same kind of look on your footage. Um, to uh, help us out today, I shot some uh, footage of my buddy Eric, who you might remember from my uh, uh, short. He's, uh, he's with a group called The Stunt People. I highly recommend you check out their work. It's super cool. Uh, here's Eric running up some stairs looking furtive. And uh, here's Eric aiming a gun at my neighbors. And uh, here's Eric hiding behind a pillar. Uh, after they called the police and uh, weren't very happy about us playing with a gun in the backyard. Um, so these are the clips that we're going to use today. And I'm sort of violating the Eric Escobar rule in the sense that I'm going to try to take footage that I've shot in kind of a flat, generic way and use only color correction to give it a distinctly different look. Um, Eric would, of course, tell you that I should have shot with the look in mind, and uh, he's absolutely right. But uh, you know what? He's not around. So here we are going to do our best to uh, using just the tools we have on this computer here uh, to uh, get a distinct look that matches these uh, big Hollywood movies. Although I'm not sure if I'm going to succeed in making Eric look like this. But we'll try. Uh, maybe we can get him to look like uh, Mr. LeBeouf. All right. So um, let's start with Transformers. What do we notice about Transformers here? Um, Transformers has a super saturated look um, that has kind of, I would say, two major colors to it. Um, people are almost orange <laughs> in the Transformers movies. Um, they're so super saturated 
that they actually appear to be um, a little bit pinkish orange. Uh, and of course you'll notice that everything else around them tends to be uh, in this sort of teal color. Um, and uh, remember that because that's going to be a common theme and I can actually show you why. Um, Adobe has this cool tool called Cooler. If you haven't played with it, check it out. It's at uh, cooler.adobe.com, K-U-L-E-R. Um, it's a tool for um, playing with color combinations according to various uh, theories about complementary and pleasing relationships between colors. So I'm going to pick the complementary color scheme, and I'm going to actually um, separate out these colors a little bit here, and I am going to pick a color that is sort of like skin tone. I'm sort of dialing in something here that's a little bit like skin tone, which you'll notice is actually orange, just a little bit less saturated. As I pull it in towards the middle, I'm making it less saturated. So if I get it kind of right, and maybe a lot so dingy, I get something here that looks a little bit like skin. And look at these colors over here. These colors are uh, this sort of not quite blue and not quite green, somewhere in the cyan or teal color range. So sure enough, it uh, stands to reason that a uh, pleasing color palette could be composed of nothing more than skin tones and teal. And in fact, you will notice that almost every movie you see has exactly this color palette. Look at how I can actually sort of compare these colors directly to the colors of the swatches here. All right. So that's the dirty little secret of almost every movie you're going to see in the theater. And of course, this was not, this kind of stylization of a color palette was not really possible to the degree that we're seeing it here before the advent of digital color correction uh, becoming, you know, kind of ubiquitous in, in uh, every film that you're going to see. And sure enough, all these films that we're looking at here uh, were digitally color corrected. Um, so let's look at Transformers. So we've basically decided that our palette is going to be to kind of be unapologetic about saturation and kind of let anything that's even remotely like look at this guy's hair this guy's hair is green this guy's hair is green this girl's hair is green in fact everything in this background is green or pink um, there are subtle delineations between other colors we also notice that the art direction plays getting back to the Eric Escobar rule the art direction plays a role here everybody's wearing something that's either sort of neutral or even on the bluish side and that uh, lends itself well. And if you'll notice, I actually put Eric in neutral and bluish kind of clothes here. So I'm going to start off with Colorista, just to kind of, uh, if I can spell it, just to kind of show you the principles that are at work here. Because in fact, the look that's generated here in uh, Transformers is, is done using a Da Vinci uh, 2K or a Da Vinci Resolve, uh, probably by Stefan Sonnenfeld at Company 3. Uh, who is uh, Michael Bay's go-to guy for color. And, um, and the Da Vinci doesn't really do much beyond what Colorista does right here. It's got, you know, it's got a lot of power, but the, at the core of it are going to be those three famous uh, trackballs that you see on every colorist surface, and that is, of course, the inspiration for the three color wheels in Colorista. So it probably, you probably don't have to... Uh, it's not too much of a stretch to imagine that the basic look of transformers is going to be achieved by pushing highlights towards a warm color and shadows towards a sort of bluish green color and then wrestling them around until skin tones look natural and then maybe possibly boosting some saturation when we're done so let's just get in get into it so we can start pushing the shadows towards the bluish green and they'll be cooperative and they'll go there and unfortunately, the whole shot is kind of going there. And that's kind of one of the things about Colorista that might throw you at first, is that although this is shadows and this is midtones and this is highlights, they're not in complete isolation from, from each other. If I push the highlights towards blue, pretty much the whole image goes blue. If I push the midtones towards blue, again, you know what? Pretty much the whole image goes blue. So what's the deal? Well, the deal comes when you do what I call the push-pull technique. And that is where...